My name is Michael Sable. I started in Stony Brook in 1988, so the class of 1992. Um, my present role now is I'm an ophthalmologist. I work in Nassau County. About I work out of six different offices, a few different hospitals. I teach residents out of the Northwell program once a week. It's the same program I trained in back when I graduated medical school. Uh, my role with the medical students is uh, many. In fact, I speak to a lot of different students. Stony Brook students, I connect through the alumni board. Uh, I offer my services and advice to students who might be interested in ophthalmology or just want to know the experience of what life is like as a physician in these days. Um, my experience at Stony Brook and how I got involved in ophthalmology. The interactions I had with my fellow students and my interactions in medical school not only created a um, the knowledge to become a physician, but it also created these social interactions that allowed me to become a better person. And I think becoming a better person and a better listener and a better a person who's able to interact better with people made me a better physician, I think. I think my patients appreciate the time I spend with them and understanding the, the problems that they have that go beyond just the pathology. You know, I'm an ophthalmologist. I deal with people who have, you know, some little problems to, to blindness. And it's a tremendous uh, emotional investment that we all make to our patients and so when someone comes in and, and there are times I can't help anybody I'm there to explain the problem and I'm there to have them understand that I know what they're going through and I think you know it, it, it molds you into the person you are and how you develop and I think this interaction in med school with my classmates and my faculty is what made me into that person I am now today my favorite and I'm sure that if you ask all of my classmates the majority of them would say the anatomy department so Jack Stern Bill Jungers uh, were so passionate about their teaching and they were so educated uh, and they stand out in my mind. They made learning fun. Uh, anatomy labs, if we had a question about, well, where's the phrenic nerve? And Bill Jungers would come over and he'd start slicing and dicing and move things around. And, and it's like, there's the phrenic, how do you know that? Fred Miller was a pathologist. He was a really tough, tough man. And we would all get a, um, a history and physical of a patient, all the lab work, and we would get this in advance and we would have to learn about all of the details, study the labs, know everything about this patient, come up with what we thought was a differential diagnosis. And all hundred of us would get in the lecture hall and Fred Miller would be at the front. We were petrified because Fred Miller would pick somebody out, Dr. Dr. Sable come on down, and you stand in front of the hundred people and he would grill you. So what does this mean? And what does that mean? And what were you thinking? And, and we're medical students, you know? But because he did that, and because we had to study extremely hard to learn that, you know, fear is a great motivator. Embarrassment is a great motivator. 10, 15 years ago, I was invited to attend Career Day at Stony Brook. And we sat in a very informal setting and people would ask me questions about ophthalmology and why I went into ophthalmology and you know, what my experiences are as an ophthalmologist. And while I was there, one of the students came up to me and said, would you be interested in going to do some mission work with us? I always wanted to do that. Life is so complicated to get away from work and family. It was difficult, but I said to the student, I said, you know what? Yeah, I'm interested. Not really understanding what I was getting myself into at the time, but I was interested. She said, well, why don't you come back out? We're gonna have a dinner with Deborah Messina. Deborah Messina is a former student of Stony Brook, and she had started a, an organization at the time it was called Promise to Peru. After that dinner, somehow I was now on the uh, committee that was going to Peru. And since that day, Every year, up until COVID, we would go to South America. We've now subsequently changed our name from Promise to Peru to Sites on Health. And we would go and we'd bring medical students. We'd bring Stony Brook medical students, um, residents, fellows, coworkers, nurses. I will tell you that the most satisfying experience in my career and my life probably was helping these people because when you go there, and for me as an ophthalmologist, I was taking care of blind people that were being, being brought in by their family because they couldn't see. Bilateral blindness, the biggest cause of blindness in the world is cataracts. A simple five minute procedure that we do in the States here that is taken for granted, they don't have access to. So we went there with the students and a whole group, 50 people, we bring a traveling operating room and we brought nephrologists and we brought orthopedics and gynecologists and, and pediatricians and all different specialties would come together. And we work in a remote area of these countries. Um, but when you go to these third world nations, you're now dealing with substandard equipment, substandard settings. Um, we do bring as much as we can from the United States, so you do have the best technology that we can in that environment. But you're dealing also with much more difficult patients, with much more advanced cataracts, with other comorbidities, and it's not as easy. 
You can take this person who was blind and give them sight get back. You made them productive in the society. The family member no longer had to escort them around. They became more productive in the society and earn a living to help take care of their family. We teach students that are there. We actually have a local ophthalmologist in Peru that I was teaching the modern cataract surgery to. So our missions are sustainable. We give people back their vision and we teach others to do the same. It's unbelievably rewarding. Everybody has to do it at some point in life, whether you're a physician, a nurse, or anybody should experience this because it's a feeling that you get you will never forget. And I've gone back every year. Um, we go for 10 days, um, 100, 100 surgeries a week. The education, the, um, the social interactions I had with faculty and students uh, shaped me. This is who I am. You know, I, I'm completely honored, I'm humbled, and I'm very proud that I'm a Stony Brook student.